Trench and excavation is considered one of the most dangerous work activities in the construction industry, and for good reason. Cave-ins, which is the most common and most dangerous hazard in trench and excavation, cause an average of two deaths a month. So naturally, we need to protect our workforce from cave-ins. We do this through either shoring, shielding, and or sloping or benching. And in order to choose an appropriate protective system, we must first understand what type of soil we're working with. Let's start by going over the different types of soil that you may encounter when digging. First, we have stable rock. Stable rock means solid mineral matter that can be excavated with vertical sides and remain intact when exposed. Sandstone and granite are some examples of it. Next, we have type A soil. Now this type of soil is cohesive with an unconfined strength of 1.5 ton per square foot or greater. Some examples of cohesive soils are clay, silty clay, sand clay, clay loam, and in some cases, silty clay loam and sandy clay loam. Cemented soils such as caliche and hard pan are also considered type A. However, if you encounter any of the examples that I just mentioned and your soil has all the properties and makings of a type A soil, it may still not be. I know, sorry to complicate things. I didn't make the rules, okay? But no soil is type A if it is fissured, has been previously disturbed, is subject to vibration from heavy traffic, pile driving, or similar effects, or if it's a part of a slope layer system where the layers dip into the excavation on a slope of four to one or greater. And if the material is subject to other factors that would require it to be classified as a less stable soil. So any type A soil that has any one of these conditions requiring downgrading can downgrade your type A soil to either type B or type C, depending. Moving on, we have type B soil. Type B soil can be defined as cohesive soil with an unconfined strength greater than 0.5 tons per square foot, but less than 1.5 tons per square foot. It may also be granular cohesionless soil, including angular gravel, which is similar to crushed rock, silt, silt loam, sandy loam, and in some cases, silty clay loam and sandy clay loam. Type B soil may also be that soil that has all the properties and makings of a type A soil, but it's subject to those factors I mentioned earlier, such as vibration or has been previously disturbed. And it can be dry rock that is not stable. And last but not least, we have type C soil. Type C soil has an unconfined compressive strength of 0.5 tons per square foot or less, and can be granular soils such as gravel, sand, and loamy sand. Type C soil may also be submerged soil, or soil from which water is freely seeping, and submerged rock that is not stable. Any material in a slope layer system where the layers dip into the excavation on a slope of four horizontal to one vertical or steeper is also considered type C soil. And there you have it, your soil ties from the most stable to the least stable. Well, how can we determine what type of soil it is? Through visual and manual tests which we'll cover in the next video. We hope this video is giving you a better understanding of the different types of soil you may encounter while excavating. If you have any questions or need assistance with your safety program, feel free to contact us using the information provided below. And we wanna hear from you guys in the comments as well. Do you work with trenching and excavations? What is your preferred method to classify soils? And lastly, follow us on all social media platforms to stay updated with our latest safety tips and tricks. And as always, until next time, be safe and thank you.